So I will have Kelsey Thompson to introduce the Niemian Ren to you. Okay, so she is a sophomore in the Northfield High School. She is doing a personal project for this semester. So here is uh, Kelsey Thompson. Hi everyone, I'm Kelsey. So I'm gonna show you guys rice dough figurines. Okay, I'm sharing my screen right now. Does everyone see the shared screen? Yeah. Okay, good. So I'm gonna start with a slideshow. So these are lots of Chinese culture activities. So there's a whole bunch of Chinese culture activities like um, calligraphy, there's Chinese yo-yo, and the one that we're going to do today is number 14, which is rice dough figurines. I'm just gonna move this over here. So rice dough figurines, these are three of the common rice dough figurines, which is Guan Yu, the one to the left, and the one in the middle with the red face is Liu Bei, and the one to the right is Zhang Fei. So now I'm going to tell you guys an origin story of rice dough figurines for, for where they came from. So on the birthday of Emperor Qianlong, the guy to the left, there was drumming and music in the royal palace, and the atmosphere was lively. The emperor met with other royalty and officials and accepted their blessings and salutations. The palace was filled with a large number of stunning gifts. So the general, the one to the right, went to the emperor, saluted him, and offered his congratulations. He then presented the dough figurines. Everyone was thrilled to see the nine dazzling and colorful deities. These figurines took the spotlight. The guests began to wonder where the general got the money to buy such priceless gifts. The emperor, the emperor could not help but ask, the birthday gift you brought, are they made of jade or ivory? The general explained, they're made of dough. Everyone was so shocked and shook their heads in disbelief. The emperor looked closely at the figurines and picked one of them up. It was light and soft. The emperor asked, who made them? The technique is so exquisite. The general told the emperor they were made by a chef from Shandong. The emperor laughed and said, there certainly are capable people in Shandong. So after the emperor left, all of the royalty and officials surrounded the figurines and praised them. Even a prince offered to buy a set of eight deities from the general as a gift for his mother. After the general returned home, he told Chef Wang, you're famous, a prince offered me a great deal of money if you could make another set of eight deities for him. I will give you 18 ounces of silver so you can rent your own house to do your work. Wang was so happy. So from then on, there was a long line of officials and wealthy people asking to buy dough figurines from him. So that's the story of where dough figurines originated from. Here are some of the eight deities. And here are more dough figurines. These are people dough figurines and these are cartoon and animal dough figurines that the dough figurines have evolved into over the years like ones on the streets, like what this guy's doing. And these are the ones that they look like. That's De La Amo. There's lots of other cartoons. So before rice dough figurines, there was just bread from what chefs made. And a common Chinese bao is mantou, which is one of the breads where dough figurines came from. So mantou are still really common in Chinese countries like Taiwan, and they're really good. So here's manto that was used to make um, other shapes of manto, like people manto up to on the top left. And there's flowers, there's animals, 
So that's how, where the idea of making rice dough figurines came from. So during the COVID-19 pandemic, we made homemade mento, which was super fun because we got to make different animal shapes of mento. And as you can see here, there's an octopus, there's bunnies and stuff like that. So. so now I'm going to show you guys how to make a parrot, a rice dough parrot, which is the most popular rice dough figurine in, um, in rice dough figurines. And so first, um, we got to make the rice dough. And these are the ingredients to make the rice dough. I already made some and prepared it. So the ingredients are salt, alum, water, white flour, glutinous rice flour, colored icing, and toothpicks, and shish kebab sticks. So the salt is for um, letting it last so it doesn't get moldy or mildewy. Same with the alum. The water and the white flour is to create the dough and to bring everything together. And the glutinous rice flour is to make it a softer texture so it's easier to deal with. And then the colored icing is used instead of food coloring and toothpicks and shish kebab sticks. So here's the rice dough recipe. Rice dough is actually edible because we did cook it and boiled it in water for one to two minutes. So it's edible and then we re-kneaded it afterwards. So here are effective tools. So if you don't have these other tools and you want to make Niamia done, then you can just find things around your house and be creative and use things like scissors, chopsticks, toothpicks, spoons, knives, and stuff like that that can get the shapes that you need. And this is a quote, 公益善其事, which means that it's necessary to have effective tools to do good work. Okay, so now I'm going to teach you how to make the rice dough parrot. Let's make this bigger. I'm make this bigger. Okay, I'm trying to make my video bigger so you guys can see me better while I'm making the parrot. So I'm gonna stop screen sharing. Okay. So I'm going to teach you guys how to make the parrot. So first you start out with a body color. So I'm gonna take some green and you roll it into a ball. So here's my green. Oh, you can't really see it. Here's my green. So you roll it into a ball. And once you, this will be for your body of the parrot. So once you've got the ball, like this, then you take lots of other bright colors to make your parrot really bright looking, like a blue, blue, and you roll it into stripes with your hands, They're like little noodles of color. And you wrap that color around this ball, like this. So it kind of looks like a globe right now. And then you take all your other colors and do it the same thing. And it doesn't have to be in any specific order, but you just roll it out with your hands and wrap it around your ball. Now we'll take some red. Pull it out. <coughs> Excuse me. And wrap it around your ball like this. And as you can see, this is in no specific order. It's just like a ball. We'll take some white and black, white, like this, wrap it around your ball, and some black. Roll it out, 
and then wrap it around your ball. So now you've had this weird ball full of colors, then take it and just roll it out, blend all the colors in so it can get into the parrot's body. So it'll look like this. Just a ball with lots of different colors in it. So now to start off your parrot's body, you're gonna do the same thing to both sides and roll only one way to create that, those spirals. So just one way, bring it back to this hand and roll up your hand. And it's gonna look like this. You just keep doing it until you get a nice point. Now you do the same thing to the other top side and you roll one way So one side's gonna be the tail and one side's gonna be the head. So now that you've got your body spirally thing of a body of a parrot, you're going to roll in the top part that you want to be the head and keep the bottom part the same. So I'm, I chose this part for the head. So you just roll that inwards until you create a parrot head like this. Just keep rolling it in until it looks like this. Now you take your shish kebab stick that we mentioned earlier and you push the tail part back a bit of the parrot so you can stick the stick on like this and then you stick it in like the belly button spot. Kind of just stick it up a bit so the parrot can sit on the stick. Like this. So now you're gonna make the eyes of the parrot. So it's a lot easier to work with once you're holding it on a stick. So take two equally sized pieces of white for the eyes and I'm gonna set down my parrot right now and roll them into balls. So here's my first white ball and here is my second white ball right here. So you take the eye spot of each parrot like right there and you gently squish the eye until it looks like this, and you stick it on to the eye spot. So it would look like this. Now you do the same thing to the other ball. You squish it gently, then you stick it on to right there. So it will look like this. Those are white spots of your eye. Now you take the black. Oh, I can't see you guys. I'm gonna bring this down. Oh, there we go. Now I can see everybody. Okay, so you take small pieces for the black part of the eye. And roll it in your hand to create a ball. Do the same to the other black dough. It's harder to deal with small pieces, but so you just do it with your fingers. Now take your toothpick that we mentioned about earlier and the ingredients that we need, and you take your little ball, your black ball, and you poke it with the toothpick like this. So I've got it like on the tip of the toothpick, and then you stick it onto the black, the white part of the eye. On the left side, like this. So that's the one side. And then you do the same thing to the other ball. Poke the middle slash bottom of it and stick it onto the left side. 
to the right side of the parrot. So your eyes are going to look like this. So now we're going to make the wings. So you can choose also any color. I'm going to choose yellow for my wings. So take two equally sized chunks of yellow, like this, and you're going to roll them both into balls. And then we're going to use the raindrop method to make the wings. So there's our first ball. Here's our second ball. And the raindrop method, we're going to take the bottom of it and roll it out like this to create a raindrop, like that. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other ball. And now take those raindrops and gently squish them down on one hand so it looks like this. I'm going to stick this on facing upwards and out on this parrot's body like this. So you just gently push it on right there and we're going to do the same thing to this one. So this is the second wing and stick it on the other side facing upwards and out right here. So now we have our wings on. We're going to make the, what is it called, crown? The crest of the head. The crest is like the feathers sticking up from the parrot's head. So we're going to use also bright colors to make it look good. So get some red. Use the raindrop method, and this raindrop is going to be a bit longer. So pull it out a bit longer, like this. So this is your raindrop. And this raindrop, we're not going to squish it because we're just going to place it right onto the head. And I made two other colors already. So stick it in the middle of his head, right there and gently attach it on. Now do the same thing to your other two colors that you made. Put it right next to the other one and stick it on gently. And the blue one. Just like that. And so that's your crest of the parrot. Now we're going to make the claws. So take a black piece and roll it into a raindrop after making a ball, just like this. You can't really see that. This raindrop right here. Raindrop. So take this raindrop and put it on the leg spot where you want it to be, right above his belly button. Or right below his belly button, I guess. Right above the stick, the shish kebab stick. Just like this. Like this. So that's his leg. And do that same thing with your other black green job. Stick it on the right side of that leg. Sometimes it's kind of hard to stick on. You just got to be patient. So once those are sticked on, you make the stick that he stands on. And how you make that, you choose your color and you roll it into a noodle like this, and you can cut off the sides if you want to, to make it the right shape with your knife or whatever you have, and place it right underneath, stick it underneath his legs, like this. Can't really see that, but stick it right underneath his legs and wrap his legs or his claws around that stick. Like this. Now once you have it wrapped around the stick, you can create the claw marks. So using your knife or your toothpick or whatever you want to use, I'm going to use this little knife tool I have. Make three little claw marks. Oh, you can't really see this. Make three little claw marks on the left side and the right side. Like this. One, two, 
and three. So like claw marks right here and right here. So that's it. Now you've made your parrot. Oh, I forgot the beak. I forgot the beak. So as you can see, it doesn't have a beak yet. So you're going to take your black, roll it into a ball, and then also use a raindrop method, but not make this raindrop too long. So make it very small raindrop like this, black raindrop, and stick it onto the spot where you want his beak to be. And it'll look kind of like a chocolate chip. You can't really see that like that, and then you bend it down a little bit, like this, and squish it on. So it's gonna look like that. And now you've made your parrot, Risto parrot. Yay! And I also made some other Risto parrots so you can have friend Risto parrots. So, if you want, you can make these at home. And I've got a YouTube video linked for how to make the Risto. And also YouTube video for how to make the parrot, just in case you forgot. So your teacher will send you the survey that I made, and I hope you can all fill it out for me. And do you guys have any other questions? Um, I have one. So why does I mean why is it that you use um icing instead of food coloring? Um, we use icing instead of food coloring because the icing is sticky, so it sticks on better, and the food coloring is like liquidy. So, yeah. But yeah, that's a really good question. Anyone else? I have one. Uh, does it taste like candy? Like you said that it was edible. Does it taste like oh. very sweet? Well, I didn't actually taste it myself because there's like a whole cup of salt in it, which is a lot of salt. But yeah, it's edible. My friend, he tasted it because I told him it was edible. So of course he tried it. But he said that it tasted really bad. So <laughs> yeah. I just, it was really it just seems really sweet. That's all. What? It seems like it'd be really sweet. Like if you taste into it, it tastes very yeah, it looks sweet because it's like colorful, like candy, but there's not actual um, sugar in it. There's actually a lot of salt, so it's actually really salty. Yeah, okay. Anyone else have any questions? If not, then everyone have a nice day and thanks for watching. And my teacher's gonna send the survey in an email. So everyone, please make sure to fill out the survey. Thank you and have a nice day. Bye guys.